It's another interesting episode of Labor Lens where we bring to you updates in the world of work. For the next three weeks, we will be focusing on the plight of the unpaid workers' salaries in Kogi State, which has actually made some of them to lose their lives. I am Sharon Ijasson, but first, let's take updates in the labor world. We'll be right back. The Bayelsa chapter of the National Union of Local Government Employees is threatening to down tools over a purported plan to sack 6,000 workers. But the state government has described the allegation as completely false. The claim is that we are sacking 6,000 workers. It is totally unfounded. It is deliberately made to incite workers against the government. We are not playing politics with the welfare of our people. We are biasons. The essence of coming to government to provide service and we are doing that to the best of our ability. I wish to state categorically that it is on record that government does not intend to sack local government workers. Rather, they are going to be placed on suspension pending when they go and clear themselves at the panel of inquiry. Paying salaries at the third tier of government has been a major challenge for the caretaker chairmen who are confronted with over bloated wage bills because 1,320 names have been found to be in various payrolls, while about 7,000 retirees still receive salaries, particularly at the State Universal Basic Education Board. Since 2012, when we came, there had been embargo on employment. The document is here stating that, that no person should be employed because of the difficulty in paying salary and other complications. So if we find out that you get your way into the service system, you are an illegitimate worker. So if you actually violate this embargo, you fall into that category. It is your duty to go and prove that you are a legitimate worker. Primary school staff, 2,184. These people will go and clear themselves with the commission while their salaries remain suspended. Anyone cleared will go. Indicted workers from the eight local government areas were also advised to appear before a panel to clear their names. Business activities at the Energy Commission of Nigeria in Abuja were grounded following a three-day warning strike by aggrieved workers under the auspices of the Association of Senior Civil Servants. The workers staged a protest blocking the entrance of the organization to drive on their demands. They are kicking against unfair labor practices, absence of proper conditions of service, and failure of the Commission's management to honor previous agreements reached with workers on creating an enabling work environment. Leader of the striking workers, Promise Uzondu Choko, told TVC News that they were demanding the removal of the Commission's Director General and investigation into the financial transactions of the organization, as well as restructuring the agency to live up to a statutory mandate. His tenure ought to have expired in May 2017. That's why his we said that his tenure has expired. So he should go. We have incessant violation of financial regulations. Yes. If you look at the gate, you will see a poster of a voucher. Why we put that voucher there and say that this is violation of financial regulation? Is we came across this voucher bearing the name of the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology. And we know he's our supervising minister, not a staff of Energy Commission of Nigeria. And the money there was paid through the project account. And we, are, we, we became curious. That's why we brought it to ask for an explanation from E.J. Bala and his management.
These are tough times for civil servants in Kogi state, who have been in the eye of the storm in recent months. Workers in the state are being owed salaries between 8 months to 22 months. With reports of suicide attributed to hardship and abject poverty now rampant, a classic example is Edward Soje, who worked with the Kogi State Teaching Service Commission for many years and was paid last in December. TVC News visited his family house in Ogori, Kogi State, which is about two hours from Glokoja, the state capital. It was quiet, a bumpy journey with lots of expectations and calls being made to ensure we find a family member to speak with. On arrival at the family house of Edward, who was said to have committed suicide because he has not been paid for more than 10 months, there was an uneasy calm as family members refused to speak with TVC, even after we explained that our intention was to know how dedicated he was to his job and understand his personality. Every effort to speak with the Soje family proved abortive as the brother in Okene refused to speak to the media and at the family house here at Ogori, Kogi State, they refuse to speak to the journalist here. They feel that their life is in danger if they speak with the press. Other people in the community also dreaded speaking to journalists. Thus, we went looking for Edward Soje's wife in Abuja. After much persuasion, Soje's wife agreed to speak with TVC News. She narrated how she and her husband met and how they were expecting triplets before now. She also spoke about the financial challenges she's faced with and how she supported her husband financially following the non-payment of salaries by the Kogi state government for many months. I'm a federal staff. We have been managing with my salary since January till date. When I take salary, I make sure I send some amount of money to him to pay Nepal bill, the person is helping us to wash clothes and for his upkeep, I've been managing. Because I was cutting my coat according to my color, 21 size this time around. So everything was okay. He comes here almost every week. Before it used to be two, two weeks. I used to go to Kogi before, but when I now took in, sort of traveling up and down that bad road, you know the road in our state now, I decided to be staying. Then he comes every two, two weeks. When the, my DD was getting closer, started coming every week, full of life, nothing, no quarrel, nothing. She's thankful for having the triplets after 17 years of waiting for a child, but says it is still a mystery that her husband killed himself. She showed us the suicide note he wrote, while also debunking the rumors that she and her husband were not on good terms. Look at my husband, though. He was what I went to call the area pass for the, for the name ceremony. He was happy, full of, full, full of life. He was very happy. I'm going to take care of my wife and my children. The children that God wants to give to me. This is the labor room after the, the bath. We went there to see our, our, our children. He was the one that wrote the names. Like he wants them to be E, E, E because he said what? He wants their name to be Elijah, Elisha, and Enoch. I was supposed to say that the people cheated me. Oh. Eh? E, E, E. So just like the name, the Yoruba name, the English name. The nurse was now telling me that when the first baby came out, second baby came out, third baby came out, that after they have cleaned up the baby and everything, that my husband was rolling on the ground, praising God. Praising God. She and my sister that stayed with me. My sister said she will call. She will be calling people. God has given me three men. You be, it's just my sister that will be down be saying, his boys, they are not men yet. His boys, he was full of joy, happy. When the doctor even tell him that, two look like you, very long like you. You say, ha, ah, is it true? Doctor, God, people that, the world, the world said I can never give birth. God has, not even one, not two, three. Grace Soje, who had been married to Edward Soje for more than 20 years, wants the government and kind-hearted Nigerians to come to our aid, as there are hospital bills running into several millions yet to be paid, noting that one of her sons is still at the National Hospital in Abuja.
We had it on, the, on her that yes, they were going to send some bag of rice to Cookie State, at least to, uh, to help the abject poverty in the society, most especially in Cookie State. But we've not been seeing it. We don't know yet. Either it's political on that tone, either it's material on that tone. Yes, we don't know it. We, we've not yet seen anything yet for now. We have not received any bag of rice yet because maybe they, it has not arrived yet. They arrived in Kogi. They have not seen it. We have never seen any rice yet. But we are hope that by the special grace of God, it will, will come by God's grace. If the rice is going to be shared, it's going to be shared among the workers, those who are on the payroll. My name is not on the payroll, and as a result of that, I shouldn't be entitled to it. But moreover, yeah, the situation on ground called for the National Assembly to raise a motion in order to support the state workers because there is hunger and starvation on the land, which is Kogi State's. Understand? And uh, I, uh, I will give them kudos for raising that type of motion because I so much believe that it's uh, an avenue of, uh, of reducing poverty rates, hungry, starvation in the land. We heard about it, but nothing was uh, brought out for the masses. And uh, what I see in a problem of uh, the country today, we've went round, if there is no peace, there is no unity. If there is no understanding, there is no unity. If there is no coming together, there is no unity. I believe the problem of uh, Nigerian in particular, let us believe on what we see, not what we see from the media. On the profile interview segment, I'll be speaking with the Kogi State NLC chairman. He will be discussing with me on the plight of workers here in Kogi State. So a lot has been said about um, workers being owed salaries here in Kogi State. Some say 22 months, some say 16 months, some say 8 months. What is actually the amount of money the gov governor is actually owing state um, workers here? Just exactly the way you have put it. Okay. Some categories of workers have been owned for 22 months running. Mm -hmm. Others are owned within 16 months. Others are owned between nine months. Okay. And others have been owned three months. Why the discrepancy? The discrepancy came out of a screening exercise that is as old as the government itself. Okay. And as the screening was going on, people who were not cleared mm -hmm. were not paid salary. Mm -hmm. And because they were not paid salaries, the months keep running on. And as the months keep running on, those indebtedness keep accumulating. And those who were cleared along the line will have their own months brought down. So what has um, the union done about this development? It is not in news again. That it is, I think it's everywhere that currently the organized labor in state is on strike. And we're on strike because of such demands of salaries for workers to be paid. And equally to other policies of government that is in, in place that does not go down in tandem. So how workers. many times has um, the state um, NLC, TUC and other um, labor um, centers actually embarked on an industrial action within this 22 months? The first one took place on 27th of June, 2016, and was called off there about July or early August, 5th of August. So now you're here again and now the strike has gone for how long? The, the strike started on 22nd of September and we are still on the strike up to this moment. That brings me back to a press release that was signed um, by NLC and other um, trade union um, um, institutions in September. In September, um, you once described um, the status of workers living in um, Kogi as worse as that of the, those living in the IDP centers. Um, what's your take on this? I wouldn't know how we would best describe it like it looks, like you have said. A situation where somebody is not earning salaries for almost 21 months, he can no longer pay his bills, the children's bills, he can no longer meet up the health challenges of his children and even bring food as a responsibility upon him at home. And this is the same situation of that nature for those who are in IDPs. And this is exactly why we describe it that way. And the fundamental truth of it is, once you're not being able to meet up your responsibilities for a period of time, it's as good as saying 
you are already a displaced person within your own state. So are you saying that uh, workers cannot actually even eat three square meals in a day? That's exactly. The, the, the basis for a civil servant on a civil service job is as the month ends, you get your salary. And that month salary you get takes you to run the next month to meet up the other. So once you are not getting your salaries consistently in those months, it becomes difficult to even feed the three square meal. People, civil servants in Kogi State, have, have become beggars. They go, from, they go to beg, to feed. Um, with what is on ground, as a journalist here, I've gone around, I've spoken to workers, and there seems to be an uneasy calm, an uneasy silence. Why are people under, um, are under, are people under threat in terms of hearing or, or saying their views about what is happening in the state? The feeling of the people tells you what it looks like, and they say at times, uh, actions speak louder than words. So that's just the situation. We cannot really see whether they're on threat because nobody has reported to us that they are under any threats mm -hmm. and nobody has told us they are on threat in any form. So for that reason, we cannot just come and begin to place, uh, place the assertion that they are on threat. It's going to be wrong. But okay. if they are not talking to you and they are not finding it easy to talk, mm -hmm. the body language speaks for itself. So moving back to the director who committed murder some few weeks back, um, I would like to ask you, is there anything the union is doing as regards that issue? For me, I feel it's a wake-up call to the government, uh, for the government to take action. But as a Labour leader, how do you feel about this development that um, one of your members actually um, died prematurely owing to the fact that it was being owed a lot of salaries? Uh, the, the reality is that we continue to pour our hearts to the family of the disease. And we pray God Almighty to grant him internal rest. But like we have said before, it is not the best option. Committing suicide is not the best option. Uh, if you are deep in either Islam or Christianity, you should know that taking your own life at times is an indebtedness you have already owned to God in the world after here. So I want you to encourage every other person that some of these things will come to pass with time and it does not really uh, have a need for anybody. It's not worth taking someone's life. Is there anything you think the government can do, be it state or federal, to ensure that um, workers of Kogi have a better, improved um, I, life? I, I, I will say the government has a lot to do. Because if we must be sincere with ourselves, I wouldn't know what it would look like if you are in government or a government appointee, and perhaps you have not earned your own salary for 22 months, for 17 months, for 9 months, and you are still serving in the same government. I wouldn't know how you will ordinarily feel you, 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 you look like. Because one, the service for which you render, you, you render will go down. Two, you ordinarily begin to feel that, okay, the situation for now is dangerous. And if it is perhaps the truth of the matter that you are an appointee and you're not being paid as long as these civil servants are, then it's as good as saying the situation is as that worst for the civil servants who are not being paid. So I would say the government should do it a wake-up call to meet up these areas of salary being owned to this category of workers and pay them so that you can reduce or alleviate the untold hardship on them. Okay, moving to the clock in, clock out system. Um, the union has actually written severally that they don't like it. Why is this? No, you see, when you are placing a demand on government, the onus lies on you that this is what you don't want. But on table of negotiation, you'll be able to tell yourself the truth and the reality why it is so. Our position of not liking it is not as if we don't want it to operate. But attaching it to salary payments negates the process of what they call minimum wage. Because the minimum wage is an act of National Assembly for every worker in Kogi State, for every worker in the whole of this country. So it's an act of the National Assembly. So changing the whole process to now say the salary payment will now be pushed under clock in, clock out where the days you come to the office is the days they are going to pay you. It's amounting to casualization of service. It's amounting to turning minimum wage to becoming daily pay. Which is not the reason for minimum wage. So we are saying if you are using the clock in, clock out, let it be used for the purpose of monitoring of truancy, absenteeism from duty, or those who are not on ground as diaspora workers staying somewhere and earning cookie salary. Yes, they can use it to monitor them. But if it turns around to become a situation where you are using it to now say, it becomes the terms of payments. It becomes dangerous. It, 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 like I rightly said, it will be amounting to casualization of civil service. It will be amounting to daily pay of civil service. And if you go into what they call the, the, the minimum wage, at the end of the day, you will agree with me that Salary and Wages Commission did not compute our minimum wage on daily pay. 
It was compute on a holistic table structure, which would be difficult for anybody to allow it, for government to now change it with a policy without a law backing. Because the payment of salary of minimum wage is not a creation of Kogi State Government, it's a creation of the National Assembly. Now, the federal um, lawmakers um, said they sent over a thousand bags of rice to Kogi State. I would like to ask you, is this true? Uh, well, I, just like every other person saw it on social media. It's the same way I would say... So are you saying that um, the well, over a thousand bags of rice were, these were are, delivered? These are, these are issues that were raised on the floor of the Senate. Contributions were made over it. And along the line, uh, uh, whether the rice had been contributed, whether they are packed somewhere, we don't know yet. But we saw it. No, 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 nobody has written us. And the National Headquarters of the Nigerian Labour Congress or the Trade Union Congress had not told us that they have gotten a delivery so of any would, rice. So how would you describe this? Uh, well, I will, I will say uh, it is an issue of somebody showing empathy for the love of workers of Kogi State without reaching them. And that is why I'm very clear that our issue is beyond rice. It's beyond rice contribution. We say wake up call for everybody in this country, in the National Assembly, to help us impress on the state government, to help us impress on presidency, to see how they can listen to our problem and put up a fight-finding mission into Kogi State to really know whether these workers are actually old or not, whether the discrepancies for which we are raising are germane or not, whether we are telling lies or not. These are the facts. But say our government, federal government to raise a special fund for our governor to now clear this backlog of areas on these people. Fine. It is already our issues beyond uh, contribution of rights. But we sincerely, out of our heart, will appreciate them for that. But it has not reached Kogi State. What do you think can be done as a matter of urgency? I think for now we are on the table of negotiation. And that yes, is why... And you've not even told me about the negotiation that happens lately. Yes. Uh, we are on the table of negotiation for now. That is why you see my tune and my mood of expression completely down. Because once you are negotiating, you don't need to say some things that will annoy any of the parties again or raise issues that at the end of the day will generate another fresh crisis. And that is why we are trying to say, okay, I'm trying to say, since we're on table of negotiation, we're already talking with government and we're trying to find a solution on this lockjam so that we can get out of it. Any position yet? Well, I think for now, the government has its own position, Labour has its own position, and we are trying to harmonize. Okay, very good to have you on the It's show. my pleasure. Thank you very much. It's a wrap on today's edition of Labour Lens. Join us next week on the plight of unpaid workers' salaries in Kogi State. I am Sharon Ijason. Thanks for watching and remember, Labour creates wealth.